you can't say Super Mario Brothers soundtrack without saying Koji Kondo. Koji Kondo was the original composer for all of the music that we know and love. And this includes songs like the classic Mario Brothers theme song, which sounds a little bit something like this. Okay, that's kind of what it sounded like on the Nintendo Entertainment System. But here's the thing, Koji Kondo did not compose the Super Mario Brothers theme in a vacuum. So Koji Kondo, when he was a young man, <laughs> he had his own band, he had several bands actually, in Japan. And he was a big fan of like hard rock, which you could say maybe Black Sabbath, and Led Zeppelin, stuff like that. Uh, he was also a fan of prog rock, also known as progressive rock. And this is where me and Koji would probably get along pretty well because Koji Kondo was a huge fan of a British prog rock group called Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. Now, if you know anything about ELP, you know that ELP had a great respect for classical music and the complexity of old-fashioned composition that was very dense and very organized and very structured uh, compositionally speaking. And so Mr. Kondo, being influenced by a group like Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, you can see why his compositional style can get very dense. He's, he has a good sense of like structure and organization, but he's not afraid to break rules either. He's not afraid to go way down the simplicity rabbit hole as well as the complexity rabbit hole. Now later on, right around the time where he started to work for a little, you know, unknown indie development company called Nintendo, uh, right around that time he got into more jazz and more jazz fusion. And that's kind of the zone that we're going to start to zero in on tonight. We're going to be doing some funk. We're going to be doing some jazz fusion. We're going to be doing some interesting spins on the classic uh, Mario Brothers soundtrack. So some of the artists that Koji Kondo was into include Herbie Hancock. Again, right up my alley, Mr. Kondo. And a, uh, I believe it's a Japanese group called Cassiopeia which was basically Japanese jazz fusion. And at that time, it was known as City Pop. And that was the sort of colloquial name for that genre. Imagine if jazz fusion was considered pop here in the States. That would be pretty cool. Um, so, these are sort of some general ideas. So like I said, this, this is right in my alley. So the stuff we're going to be playing tonight is going to sound like it could be maybe on a Herbie Hancock record or a weather report record or maybe a snarky puppy record but we're gonna try to not stray too far from the notes and the structures of the Mario music itself uh, the first little piece that I played for you there is known as the overworld theme and this is the first music that you hear when you blow into your NES cartridge and jam it into the NES and like it has a little spring-loaded mechanism that you, <laughs> you have to put in uh, and then you hit the power button and what you get is a blank screen so, so you you eject it and you, you one more time you push it back in all right now now it finally starts Super Mario Bros you hit the start button and we have Super Mario Brothers overworld theme We're getting into the final Super Mario song of the evening. This Super Mario song is heavily influenced by Japanese jazz fusion. And so we're talking about the underworld theme. And this song came from a jazz fusion tune by this, uh, by this group Friendship. And the name of the song is Let's Not Talk About It. 
and it has sort of the weather report Jaco Pastorius kind of vibe to it. So I thought it would be kind of interesting to create a remix of the Underworld theme in the style of the original jazz fusion type of groove to see what that would sound like. And maybe if they had better audio technology back in the 80s when they were creating the soundtrack for Super Mario Bros., maybe this is what the Underworld theme would have always sounded like. So it's an interesting little piece of video game uh, history and an interesting piece of music history because we're used to hearing it in that 8-bit tone. If we could get into the mind of Koji Kondo, we might, uh, we might have an idea of what his original vision for Mario is. And I would assume that Mario would have to be a big fan of jazz fusion. And I know we heard from Mario a little bit earlier uh, as well, but let's see how he likes this idea. What do you think, Mario? Where is he at? You'd like this idea? Oh, there he is. Hey, there's there's Mario. He's going. All right, Mario likes my idea. He's he's a huge fan of jazz fusion. So let's let's jump right into it here. Let's see what we can come up with. <laughs> 